Cloudflare experiences a bug, SHA-1 is officially dead, and a man accused of DDoSing almost a million people has been arrested. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for Tuesday, February 28, 2017. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. This show is now on iTunes as well as your favorite podcasting app. Thanks to our patrons over at patreon.com slash threatwire. Thank you so much. Make sure to subscribe, and now, on to the news. The first story is all about Cloudflare. They are a company that optimizes security and performances for websites all around the world. 5.5 million websites to be exact, including popular websites such as Medium, Yelp, OkCupid, Zendesk, 23andMe, Uber, Fitbit, and even more. On the 17th, Tavis Ormandy, a vulnerability researcher at Google, contacted Cloudflare regarding a problem he found which seemed to be residing on Cloudflare servers. It was later known that this bug was the now infamously coined Cloudbleed bug by the mainstream media. Cloudbleed was a problem with an HTML parser and three features called email obfuscation, server-side excludes, and automatic HTTPS rewrites. Usually, HTML parsers work fine, and they do things like change HTTP over to HTTPS while passing a website through a server to your web browser. In Cloudflare's case, though, a parser rewrite and update caused the bug to start happening. The HTML parser created a buffer overflow, or in their case, overrun, of private data to be leaked at random intervals and at very low percentages. And that's 0.00003% to be exact. If a user searched for the right terminology via Google search or otherwise, they would be able to see this data very clearly. Data leaked included HTTPS cookies, authentication tokens, HTTP post type, and other data. Because of the clearly serious problem, Cloudflare immediately took action and they started mitigating the bug 47 minutes after it was shared with them. That's a really, really fast time frame with a bug being fixed at time of recording. Now, some search sites were still showing existing queries late last week. While chances were low that your personal data was leaked in this overrun, you should still take precautions just in case. Since the leak was happening since September, be prudent with your security instead of just assuming that you're in the clear. Most importantly, don't panic. As Troy Hunt points out in a great blog post over on his website, sensationalism of bugs is a very, very popular, especially for clicks. But but if it has a cool name or a logo, well, it must be serious. He also goes on to explain why it's very tough to measure this kind of bug. Experts recommend users change their passwords and turn on two-factor authentication for your sites if you haven't already, use a password manager, and you can also check the site www.doesityusecloudflare.com to see if a site uses Cloudflare, but obviously this may not mean that it was affected for sure. Wow, this is so awesome. We knew that this would happen eventually, but it's still incredibly cool. Basically, a team of researchers at Google and the CWI Institute of Amsterdam were successful in a SHA-1 collision attack. That's awesome. So what does this mean? With encryption, a collision happens when two different files have the same cryptographic hash. This has already happened in 2010 against MD5 hashes, and now it's happened to SHA-1, which has been widely adopted to prove authenticity of digital certificates and file objects. Now, by using Amazon's cloud computing and about 110,000 USD dollars, an attacker could create this collision. Now, while me and you may think that that's a lot of money and rather costly, a state-sponsored hacker or a well-funded attacker would not. That would be child's play for them. Now, this means that an attacker could copy or steal a SHA-1 hash from one file and recreate it for a spoofed copy of that file. Certain types of applications will be affected, including digital certificates, PGP and GPG signatures for emails, software vendor certificates and signatures, ISO checksums, Git, and more. File integrity is potentially vulnerable. The researchers recommend moving to better cryptographic hashes as soon as possible, such as SHA-256 or SHA-3, as 
Get this, they will be releasing a proof of concept on the collision attack in 90 days, and if you are worried about a file's integrity, you can check it with Google's detection tool, which is linked below in the show notes. Now, ironically, there's even more news about this. The two PDF files that were uploaded by the researchers as kind of a test with the same SHA-1 hash, i.e. collided PDFs, they broke the WebKit browser engine on Friday due to the Apache SVN, or subversion, which tracks and merges duplicate files. Now, since WebKit uses SVN, it broke. So um, I guess just be careful when uploading collided docs if you are testing them and use the SVN tool just created by admins to reject any of those duplicate hashed or documents uh, or files. The entire research paper is linked below. It's 23 pages long of technical information, but it's really, really interesting to read. I highly suggest taking a look, especially if you want to get into the dirty details. On Wednesday of last week, European police forces arrested a 29-year-old British man whom they suspect played a key role in the takedown of about 1 million home internet routers in a branch of the Mirai botnet, which happened late last year. The botnet was able to take citizens in Liberia, the UK, and Germany all offline sporadically, and also attacked Spam House, which is an anti-spam organization. Mirai is a botnet that attacked noted security researcher Brian Krebs' website in one of the largest DDoS attempts ever recorded which we had reported on previously on a ThreatWire episode. The German Federal Criminal Police Office announced the arrest as the 29-year-old man is suspected of computer sabotage against Deutsche Telekom. Now, since the person behind the attacks used a screen name, and their screen name was Best Buy, which is a really odd screen name to choose, they used evidence collected by Spoof IT to find the man's identity. If the man is indicted, he will face six to 10 years in prison. Before I go, I wanna give a huge thanks to everybody who supports the show so far on Patreon. You have made it possible for us to create a video RSS feed for iTunes, along with your favorite podcasting apps, of course. And if you find value in this and you wanna spare a few cents an episode, please consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash threatwire. Also, I just updated our Patreon ThreatWire webpage with all these snazzy new graphics, and I made it really easy to find all the perks and the goals and everything. So even if you don't contribute, check it out, because I'm quite proud of all the changes that I made. And also, we may even feature your adorable fur babies, like these ones, in our next episode. Just choose the perk for Hush Puppy. You will get access to extra content, an audio RSS feed, and new perk levels. And also, I've been doing some behind-the-scenes videos and posting those for Patreon as well. I hope you will contribute to help us keep this coming independent, ad-free. If you cannot donate, of course, a like, share, subscribe, all of those go a long way too. And you can find all of our episodes and links to our social networks at threatwire.net. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.